The reason that I started shaping was that I think when I was like 14 or 13, 14 or 15, I was riding um, Jeff McCoy's boards and I'd go and stay with Jeff in Sydney for the two school holiday groups each year. And we'd surf early in the morning at North Narrabee and I'd go to the factory, um, watch him shape. And whenever someone came in and said, hey, the surf's really good, everyone would just like stop half whatever they were doing. They would stop and just all go in and mass and go surfing. And it just kind of seemed like, you know, the most awesome lifestyle. And I figured that I've got to be a shaper. That's the one. <laughs> I first started going to Hawaii in the 70s. I, the first year I went was 1972. That was all on single fins. A lot of the classic photos on the Reno Abalera shade magenta and yellow board. Um, that was a seven foot eight single fin. And then I rode single fins all the way through until 1982. Um, there was single fins exclusively up to 1978. And then in 78, like I reintroduced the twin fin. So for the, I guess the world title years from 78 through to 82, um, I rode twin fins on, you know, 90% of the tour and the 10% of the tour that was in Hawaii, um, I rode single fins. The first board I kind of created was, um, it was in 1978 and became known as the free ride twin fin, which was the you know, there's a replica of the board on the right there. Um, and I'm going to sound like a total egomaniac, but I got it right first go. It went so good, I couldn't believe how good it went. Like, it was fast, um, it was incredibly manoeuvrable, way more manoeuvrable than a single fin. I felt like I was going twice as fast. I'm sure I wasn't. I'm sure if you were sitting there watching it, you'd be going, you're going exactly the same speed as that guy on the single fin. But it felt like I was going twice as fast. The main thing was that I just felt it made me like really competitive in small surf because it felt alive and fast. And, you know, I wasn't scared of if I got to an event and it was two foot and on shore. Whereas before on a six eight single fin with a narrow tail, I knew I was going to sink after the first turn. I just went, I've got a secret weapon that after the first turn, is gonna keep going and go fast. So that was sort of how it all started. I guess I'm just really stoked to, um, to see it come back and to see so many people like embrace it, you know, to have this opportunity to have, you know, to have this, this fin set with FCS and with a stabilizer and then, you know, the original twin fin set, it's, um, you know, it's so awesome to have, have these in the marketplace so that, you know, people can put them in twin fins. And as I spoke about in the interview, I get so stoked when I see these in, they don't just have to be in boards I've made. I get them, get stoked seeing them in other manufacturers' boards and I get stoked seeing people ride them. And um, I'm just really grateful that, you know, the twin fin has been taken out of the museum and given this whole leaf of, new lease of life with so many young surfers and so many young shapers like embracing them and doing twin fin models. I get so stoked when I see, you know, the best surfers in the world um, with my fins in their boards. So it just happens occasionally, you know, 99.9% .9 of the boards I make are for recreational fun surfers. And to occasionally see, you know, Mick Fanning or Philippe, to Philippe Toledo or Chloe Andino on one and to actually see a clip on, a clip on Instagram um, <laughs> I gotta be honest, I get like seriously stoked and watch that clip about 20 times in a row. I go into total Tom Carroll froth mode. <laughs> This is a replica of the, um, the first 20 in 1978, which I call the free ride model. And this fin is exactly the same template as the fin from the original board. And the fin in my FCS twin fin set, the MR78, is the same template as that fin there. So it's the first, I guess the first twin fin template that I um, came up with and used. And I just kind of played around with a fin 
kind of basically just putting it on the board and just going, well, that looks ridiculous, it's too far up. And that looks ridiculous, it's too far back. So it had to sit like in relation to where the wing was and then having it right back in the wing didn't look right. You know, having it up here didn't look right. So a lot of the positioning was actually visual. First twin fin model I did with FCS and I guess my initial thought was that because that was the first fin I used in 78, that was my preference to go with that template. But in discussions with everyone at Surf Hardware FCS, they felt that, that a twin fin template that was more suited to a whole range of boards would be a better fin to come on the market with than that, which is purely aimed at more of a, a retro twin fin. The idea was to actually have a fin template that was a little bit smaller in size all the way around and actually had some more, this is a, a sort of a fatter stand-up template. This one is actually has more rake in it and the fin is, is narrow and smaller because it was meant to work in conjunction with a little stabiliser fin. It was a difficult one to get right because I still wanted to make these big enough where you could still use them as a twin fin but not be too big that you couldn't use them with a stabiliser. It was a balance to try and get and it was a lot of experimentation with different size fins to try and get a set of fins that if you wanted to use those primarily as a twin fin they would work. If you wanted to use them with, as a twin fin with a stabiliser, they would still work. They would be the right size. They wouldn't feel like the board was too stiff. In terms of my twin fin templates, I think if you were riding like a retro style twin fin or if you were, if you were surfing a board purely as a twin fin, I think that 78 template is probably the best choice. But if you're after something that is a, a really good all round set of fins that you can that'll it'll work great as a twin fin on a whole range of twin fins from retros to modern boards. But you're also looking for something that has a little more drive and a little more control when the surf gets better and you want to use it in conjunction with a stabiliser, then that set works really well. I think they enhance the whole surfing experience. And I think to a certain extent, they either hoodwink you or brainwash you when you're thinking that you're surfing better than you probably actually are you know you, you feel like you're surfing faster and you feel like everything is happening freer feels like you're doing more turns and you're just just surfing surfing better like looser and freer you know it may not look like you are but the internal feelings are you know you feel that's the way you feel and i think a lot of the time the, um I guess the enjoyment or the experience that you're trying to get from a surf session is, is the feel. And if you feel like you're going really good or you feel like you're surfing fast or you feel like you're ripping, then that's, you know, you can't hope for anything more than that. Mm -hmm.